F-22 is making a strong comeback, now equipped with the world's most advanced technology. After several years of being overlooked, this aircraft is finally getting upgraded and gearing up to dominate the skies. Ironically, this sudden resurgence comes at a time the USAF is debating whether to retire or upgrade the F-22 Raptor, the aircraft that was selected over the YF-23. This unexpected development has sparked a wave of curiosity and has raised key questions, such as, is the YF-23 being redeveloped as the FAX? Why was this air fighter initially rejected by the USAF? Join us as we unveil something truly magnificent, the new YF-23 that has shocked Russia and China. The aircraft that was once rejected by the Air Force has now truly become the most sought after. While this narrative well describes the situation with the YF-23, it leaves out some of the key details of how the USAF perceived the aircraft as not sophisticated enough for its affairs. Let's get into that. Traveling back in time to the 1980s during the Cold War, when the United States Air Force recognized their immediate need for a new and technologically advanced fighter that would be sophisticated enough to replace the F-15 and be agile enough to counter the Soviet's formidable fighters, the Su-27 and MiG-29. When the USAF put the words out, renowned aviation companies immediately jumped at the offer. However, only Northrop and Lockheed were selected to create prototypes. They were allowed to partner with other companies of their choice. For instance, Northrop teamed up with McDonnell Douglas to develop the YF-23, while Lockheed Martin partnered with Boeing and General Dynamics to design the YF-22. The prototypes from these companies were unique. The YF-23 was designed to be faster and stealthier, but it was not agile. After a series of tests, the USAF came to a very difficult decision, which led to the selection of the YF-22, the Raptor dominating the skies today. The YF-23, on the other hand, were stored while different groups thought about using them for more research. But none of those plans moved forward. In 2004, Northrop Grumman used the second YF-23 as a display for a regional bomber project, but the project was canceled because bombers with a longer range were needed. Both prototypes were eventually displayed in museums. Well, its fate is about to change. While the United States was ready to unleash the power of advanced technology on its enemies, the reason for the haste development of this aircraft suddenly crumbled along with the Soviet Union collapsing. This was quite unexpected. Well, it reduced the United States' worries. Both the F-22 and F-23 would have been top fighters in the early 21st century. The question was which one the Department of Defense would fund, and we all know the answer to that. Each plane had strengths. The YF-23 had a unique look with a flat pancake-like body and blended wings. Its diamond-shaped wings helped reduce air drag at high speeds. Only two prototypes of the YF-23 were ever built. The first prototype was nicknamed the Black Widow II by the Northrop Grumman team because of its sleek black paint. The aircraft was equipped with a powerful propulsion system, the Pratt and Whitney YF-1 19PW100 engines, that gave the fighter the ability to supercruise at Mach 1.43, or about 1,088 miles per hour, which meant that it could maintain that airspeed without the use of its afterburners. Also called DP-117K, this prototype was designed to show Northrop's plan for a next-generation fighter. It needed to be fast, stealthy, and easy to maintain. The plane had a sleek, unusual look with diamond-shaped wings and a body built to cut through the air at high speeds. It had unique V-shaped tails and a cockpit placed high for better pilot visibility. The sharp nose design helped with maneuvering and its landing gear included three wheels. A large weapons bay was placed underneath for storing missiles. It was designed to be less stable for better performance controlled by a computer through fly-by-wire technology. To roll, it raised flaps on one side and lowered them on the other. The V-shaped tail fins, angled at 50 degrees, controlled pitch and yaw by rotating in different ways. Test pilot Paul Metz said, the YF-23 handled better at high angles of attack than older planes, reaching up to 60 degrees AOA. For braking, both wing flaps went down and ailerons went up. To save money, some parts came from other planes like the F-15 and F-A-18. The second YF-23 prototype was called the Grey Ghost because of its paint. It had General Electric YF-120 engines, letting it reach Mach 1.6, 
which is over 1,200 miles per hour in supercruise. Its top speed was around Mach 2. In comparison, the YF-22 hit Mach 1.58. The YF-23 had a longer range of 2,796 miles and could fly up to 65,000 feet, while the YF-22 had a range of 2,000 miles and a ceiling of 50,000 feet. The YF-23 was fast, stealthy, and hard to detect by radar. But Lockheed Martin's YF-22 was better marketed. It was armed with a fixed 20-millimeter M61 Vulcan while the internal bay was capable of housing four AIM-9 short-range missiles. It took the Air Force several years of tests before they could come to a conclusion. This proved how difficult their decision was. Now, this stirred up a lot of controversial questions. If the YF-23 was believed to be better than the YF-22 in terms of performance, why then do we have the Raptor soaring the skies? According to Dave Majumder, politics and bureaucracy played quite a huge role in the selection of the F-22. The Pentagon was already frustrated with Northrop and McDonnell Douglas after issues with the B-2 and A-12 projects, and this frustration worked in favor of Lockheed's YF-22. The Navy, however, disliked the F-23 for unique reasons, hoping to adapt the F-22 for its needs. The Air Force preferred the F-22's superior maneuverability, which gave it an edge in most combat situations. If the competition hadn't happened during the Soviet Union's collapse, the YF-23 might have had a better chance. Its advanced features could have attracted more investment, and building both planes could have helped the defense industry. Ultimately, choosing Lockheed's design contributed to the merger of Boeing and McDonnell Douglas. Nearly 25 years after losing the ATF bid, this powerful aircraft was almost brought back when an American ally needed a strong fighter. Japan had long been interested in stealth jets and tried to get the Raptor from the U.S. Facing threats from North Korea and China, Japan wanted to strengthen its air force. However, Congress refused to sell the F-22 for two reasons, to keep its classified technology safe and to maintain the power balance in the Indo-Pacific. At the time, China wasn't seen as a major threat, and the U.S. was focused on the war on terror. The Japanese Air Force decided to create its own stealth fighter. Tokyo later joined the F-35 Joint Fighter Program and now uses both F-35A and F-35B jets. After much study and building models, Japan's Mitsubishi X-2 Shinshin test aircraft flew as a technology demonstrator in 2016. However, Japan is still looking for a new stealth plane for the future. In 2018, Tokyo's search for partners in its FX stealth fighter program got an eager response from Northrop Grumman. While there was talk of reviving the YF-23, Sebastian Roblin noted that Northrop would likely offer key design elements, like parts of the airframe and engine, that could be combined with Japan's cutting-edge tech. The YF-23, though impressive, is 30 years old, and its radar-absorbing materials and avionics are outdated. Still, Japan might prefer upgrading a proven design rather than starting from scratch, as Roblin suggested. In late 2023, Japan's foreign and defense ministers signed an important defense agreement with Britain and Italy to work together on developing a sixth-generation fighter jet. After the signing, Japan's defense minister, Kihara Minoru, expressed his belief that this partnership combines the best technologies from Japan, the UK, and Italy to strengthen security during a challenging time, the most complex since the Second World War. The aim is to have a sixth-generation fighter ready by 2035, with Japan likely developing the airframe while European partners integrate advanced technologies. There's even a chance this airframe will be based on the YF-23. London expects the project to use cutting-edge technologies, making the fighter one of the most advanced, adaptable, and connected in the world. It will be a supersonic stealth jet with advanced sensors and next-gen artificial intelligence capable of flying without a pilot and equipped with hypersonic weapons. Its powerful radar will provide 10,000 times more data than current systems, giving it a significant edge in battle. The YF-23 was a remarkable aircraft designed for stealth and supercruise. Even though it lost to the F-22, it was ahead of its time because the U.S. Air Force envisioned what air combat would be like in the 21st century when it was built. Many parts of the YF-23 are still classified, and its technology could be used in future stealth fighters and other aircraft. 
Although it finished second, the YF-23 was still a technological success. While there are rumors of the YF-23 being modified to be the next generation FAXX, the USAF has not confirmed anything, and it still remains a theory, quite an interesting one at that. What would the modified YF-23 look like as a sixth generation aircraft? If there is an iota of truth to this theory, this new aircraft would replace the F-14D Super Tomcat as the U.S. Navy's long-range air superiority fighter. Northrop Grumman engineers should lead the development and would be working closely with Soab B to create the new fighter. Including Soab is important because of their success with the Gripen, which is designed for easy maintenance and upgrades. Production should happen in one location to ensure easy oversight, rather than being spread across the country for political reasons. The main goal would be to use many existing top quality systems and proven technology to speed up the development of the A model. Technology from the latest versions of the F-15K slash SA, including two-seat cockpits in parts from the Super Hornet should be considered. An infrared search and track system is essential with important sensors facing the rear and sides. For ground attack missions, the aircraft would use a modified targeting pod in one half of the front weapons bay. The A model would not use radar absorbent paint, which has been noticed to complicate maintenance but later models or special United States Air Force versions could have this feature. The B model should include a fully developed variable cycle engine, and all designs should allow for the addition of conformal fuel tanks. To ensure the aircraft can be easily maintained, it must be able to operate in rough field conditions like the A-10 Warthog and at various locations, where maintenance support will come from two trucks or a C-130. Major changes to the original YF-23 design would involve increasing the space between the engines to create a larger weapons bay. There might also be the addition of canards or leading edge extensions for better performance during slower flights. The aircraft could have a blown wing or a large air brake to help reduce landing speeds. While major modifications and technological upgrades would be done to the aircraft, it's still not a fact that it would surpass the ability of the F-22 in terms of capability or technological advancement. And if you're wondering why, well, here it is. Over the years, the F-22 has received numerous upgrades and the USAF has spent not millions, but billions on keeping this aircraft technologically upgraded to take on threats, especially since the country's sixth generation aircraft is still being developed. Recently, the United States Air Force recently awarded RTX a contract of $1 billion to upgrade its sensors for new ones that are categorized as Group B hardware, together with slates and support equipment. The work is scheduled to take place in McKinney, Texas, and is expected to be finished by May 8, 2029, according to the Department of Defense contract statement. The aviation has recently reported that the Air Force is testing new sensors on the F-22 to help extend its service life, which will also be used for the NGAD systems. The report also mentioned Brigadier General Jason D. Voorhees, the program executive officer for fighter and advanced aircraft who stated they aim to implement these sensors more quickly. The F-22 team has completed six flight tests to show the advanced sensors. The F-22 team is working hard to modernize with advanced sensors, better connectivity, weapons, and other features. We're making good progress, which will allow for a fast rollout soon, he said. This will be achieved through a middle-tier acquisition program. Some of the sensors mentioned in the contract could be the stealthy pods used on the F-22. Air and Space Forces previously quoted officials who confirmed that these pods contain IRST or infrared search and track sensors. The development of a new IRST sensor for the Raptor was also noted in the service's 2025 budget request, although it didn't specify that the sensor would be in a pod. This effort is part of an F-22 upgrade plan that aims for $7.8 billion in investments before 2030 including $3.1 billion for research and development and $4.7 billion for purchasing new equipment. The development is a surprising change from earlier USAF plans to retire older F-22 airframes, which they had asked Congress to approve. This group includes 32 Block 20 units from a total fleet of 186. Meanwhile, the Air Force is focusing on upgrading the remaining 154 aircraft with exciting new features, such as advanced cryptography, a more flexible open architecture, new weapons, and an improved threat warning receiver, in addition to the IRST sensors. 
The aviationist has also reported that the F-22 would be equipped with new fuel tanks. This fuel tank called the low drag tank in pylon was designed to be stealthier and more efficient than the current 600 gallon tanks. The LDTP aims to allow the F-22 to fly supersonic while carrying external tanks and to extend its range. The pylons come with smart rack pneumatic technology for better control during ejection. In its fiscal year 2023 budget request, the United States Air Force stated that the F-22 LDTPs have advanced designs that improve range and endurance while ensuring the aircraft remains effective and safe, which are essential for maintaining air superiority. The introduction of new weapon systems is taking place. The F-22 has typically carried AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missiles. However, the U.S. Air Force is now adding the AIM-260 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, or JASSM-XR, which is a long-range, precision-guided weapon that can hit targets up to 500 miles away. This longer range greatly enhances the F-22's ability to attack targets from a safe distance, lowering the risk to both the aircraft and the pilot. In addition to new missiles, the F-22 is getting upgrades to its targeting and attack features. The new advanced targeting, forward-looking infrared sensor system gives the aircraft better night vision and target identification skills. This upgraded sensor technology helps the F-22 to engage targets more effectively in low-light situations and bad weather. The F-22 is not meant to operate alone in modern warfare. It is built to work together with other aircraft, ground forces, and intelligence resources. The U.S. Air Force is upgrading the F-22's networking abilities to improve how it shares data and communicates with other systems. This better connectivity allows for improved coordination and tactical decision-making, making the F-22 more effective in a connected environment. These upgrades and enhancements aim, in part, to address concerns about the F-22's competitiveness against China's J-25th generation fighter. The War Zone also reported that the F-22 Raptor is acting as a technology incubator for the Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance Program, which will be a sixth-generation system featuring a manned fighter supported by unmanned aerial systems serving as loyal wingmen. The 2025 budget request outlines several exciting upgrades, including a Mode 5 Identification Friend or Foe System, Link 16 Communications, and a Multifunction Information Distribution System joint tactical radio system. It also includes a new operational flight program, advanced radar electronic protection, and a modernized embedded GPS inertial navigation system. Brig General Vorheis highlighted the GRACE, which means Government Reference Architecture Compute Environment Software, which would enable the installation of non-traditional F-22 software, enhancing processing power and pilot interfaces. Additionally, a new helmet is being tested as part of the next generation fixed wing helmet program to replace the outdated 40-year-old HGU-55P headgear. This modern helmet will support helmet-mounted devices that provide vital flight and weapon aiming information, making pilots' jobs easier. The F-22's role as a testbed for new systems could extend its service as the Air Force's air superiority fighter until the NGAD is operational in the 2030s. Despite being developed during Ronald Reagan's presidency, when Donald Trump was just a struggling businessman, the F-22 remains a highly capable aircraft. With the recent upgrades, it is likely to be able to counter any threats from the Air Force's near-peer adversaries. With this series of upgrades, comparing the capabilities of the F-22 and the proposed YF-23 would be hard. However, if the theory relating to the FAXX is true, these aircraft would only help to boost the United States Air Force's superiority making other technologically advanced countries tremble in fear. If it were just a mere rumor, the United States keeps advancing in the development of its NGAD program, and with the help of the F-22, the skies would still be dominated with an aircraft that's capable of taking on modern threats. Either way, it's a win-win situation. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.